my son's car, not my car. Well, you're the current owner. Are you reg Did you register it? Yeah, yeah. And if okay. I don't get an emission tested by Saturday, I lose my registration. None of my problem, Eddie. I know. <laughs> no, no, we'll, we'll do something. Hey, uh, welcome Actually, back. I think I can get an extension, so I'm not even going to worry about it. No, you're good. We'll just plug in the, uh, the stock ECU. Yeah, but you got to change the... Uh, um, what? The coil? Coil. Yeah, I have the spare but ones. But I'm not worried about it. No, but you have my spare ones to use. Right. For that oh, yeah. Afterwards. No, we got everything we need. So this is why I put uh, sequential and non-sequential on my coils. Every time I make new coils, I do both. Right. Like it's just a plug that you got unplugged. Yeah. This is the reason why. Hey, uh, sorry. He says he's got to change some wiring before it goes in, too. So. So I'm not even worried about it. I'm just not. It's just it on the throttle body sensor. It's just two wires plugging. Oh, okay. it's, it's like literally takes 30 seconds. But he says the pain in the yeah. ass. Hi everyone. Uh, welcome back. Sorry. Well, that's uh, Eddie. That's his car, the Red Ninja, as we're developing it. And this basically has the uh, Quicksilver setup uh, ported over with eight injectors. Today uh, we're gonna tune 93 on this. Uh, we're gonna do cold start. I had the car sit here overnight. We're gonna tune cold start first, um, and then uh, basically take it around, make sure everything is all right. A little bit of uh, background on what happened. I originally put a base map in this, and he broke the car in, 1,300, 1,500 miles, whatnot, and uh, I'm going to have to readjust his cold start and everything because now the motor is you know fully broken in and i guess that this might be some changes to the combustion chamber but the car is running fine i want to see what everything looks like in the tune and the trims and everything um so yeah let's uh let's get started and we're gonna tune on 93 today i'm not aiming for big power 93 is just for him to just drive around uh and boost a little bit this is as you know has the g42 1200 uh, four facing with the five inch intercooler and JMF manifold with three inch uh, charge pipe. Uh, has a mechanical fuel pump with eight injectors. Primaries are ID2000, secondaries are ID1300s. And he has a surge tank in the wheel weld for the fuel system. It's a very pretty nice car. Love the interior. They used to be my seats, but never used. But yeah, let's uh, let's get started. You ready, Eddie? No. It's gonna be annoying. That's all. I wonder if he's got a bigger one in his office. Oh, okay, I got it. Oh, you know, he pulled the plugs. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you busy? No, go ahead. Um, he pulled the plugs yesterday. Okay. And they looked great, except for the fact he did mention that he thought it was uh, running a little rich. It should be. Okay. Remember, I just put you a base map so you can drive around. Right, right, yeah. The AEM Infinity actually requires a full cycle of your crank turn in order for it to sync and start firing your coils. So those of you who are using aftermarket ECUs might see that you need a little bit more of cranking time to actually get the car started. Uh, we have an added challenge because there's a mechanical fuel pump which really doesn't work very well on low RPMs and which is basically the starting RPM. After a thousand or whatever um, RPMs it actually works fine.
there's a lot of debate about hey should we break in the motor on the dyno right after we build it um, but I actually prefer to do a long break in and then do the whole startup and cold start and all that other tuning because I found that the the vehicle efficiency or the uh, how efficient the car is and taking air during idle at all sorts of RPMs um, actually changes when you break the motor in because it does physically change your combustion um, uh, chamber when you break the motor in the pistons uh, you know grow a certain amount when you first started and the first few hundred miles and then it gets set into its uh, ranges of growth and shrinking and also your car kind of I feel it runs a little hot when it's first started versus after you know long break in your cooling system everything is basically falling into place so I prefer to do all these normal uh, non-power uh, tuning um, after a long period of break in not like throw it on the dyno and then break it in and then do it it does make sense at certain times like if you have a car that's basically uh, gonna not see a regular driving you're just gonna you know just throw it on track or whatever and whatnot for that is all right you know you got time you don't have time and you're trying to just you know get the motor going so that is my main reason for actually uh, doing the long um, uh, braking procedure which requires a higher mileage of driving now it looks like the uh, settings for the idle air isn't really uh, working for whatever I said it before and before I tuned this I actually drove it and it was, everything was fine but all of a sudden after he broke it in that's not working either so I just want to make sure none of the biz screw Is hasn't been played screw with. All the way tight? So it seems like Mo uh, kind of played with the biz crew um, when he was breaking the motor in and the customer came back and said, hey, you know, it's fluctuating. So he, you know, just basically played with it. And that's what's causing um, the issue. It's not his fault. I mean, he genuinely needed a, 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 a to bring the, I guess, uh, the RPM down uh, from what he tells me that it was fluctuating. But I could have just tuned it up, but he didn't tell me, but it was fine. We can adjust it now. So everything seems to be good. The RPMs are exactly where I wanted at a thousand uh, RPM and idle. And this is a S3 2.0 with oversized uh, both intake and exhaust valves and a huge intake manifold. So to getting it to idle solid at 1000 RPMs and the AFRs, you know, solid 14.7, um, you know, didn't take that much, but it's just, you got to follow the procedure you know what to do when you know something is uh, rich you know what to do when the rpms are high just follow your you know, what you know and how to correct that issue and don't just change too many things all at once correct one problem at a time so now i finally got the car on the dyno um and I am gonna do because I'm, I'm I think because the idle change I have everything else has changed when it comes to B and, and fuel and you know these big turbo uh, built motors with you know big valves large cams the fueling and timing really makes a huge difference on park throttle driving which your car will live on most of the time and this is why I'm actually driving the way I am on the dyno right now I am literally checking the Park Throttle VE. I set the computer to record everything. Um, and I'm gonna adjust uh, after a little bit of base run. Now I intentionally made uh, in the boost the fueling a little rich on purpose. Um, just to make sure that in case I over boost, which I set it to 22 pounds, um, you know, it won't hurt anything. And the timing as usual is like, I don't know, I think I set the uh, red line at 
As I'm doing more of these videos, uh, I guess the inner relationship and between me and Mo, we're like brothers, is coming out. I literally treat him like my brother and sometimes like my sister. But uh, he's a good dude. Sometimes I'm so I concentrate so much that I, I don't want people talking to me. Um, this is one of those times. I'm adjusting the VE right now slightly to just to make sure you know park throttle is uh, perfect. And again, these built motors, slightest changes, I would say they're more sensitive to per percentage of um, fuel AFR changes than I would say a normal car. Um, I have seen where I had to put some of them at like park throttle at 13, 12.5 in order for it to run correctly. This isn't one of those cases, but um, yeah, this is the reason why park throttle and uh, pre-boost is so, so important. Couldn't complete that run because I hit a boost cut, but we hit 475 and it was at like 25, 26 pounds. But I set the boost to 22, it was definitely over boosting and uh, I stopped it at 7,000 because it would have kept on climbing. So I made some adjustments, um, basically took out a lot of timing so I don't inadvertently um, you know, spool too much that sometimes affects the overall boost and then I basically zeroed out the wastegate completely. Uh, I had a like 5 or 10 but let's see what that does. So it was still over boosting and we lost a little bit of power because I pulled timing. But well worth it for the safety of the car. This is, after all, a 93. I just told Mo we're hitting 27 pounds no matter what I do. And that's the terror on his face. All right, so we're running 0% uh, duty cycles for the wastegate, but it's, I set the uh, max boost as 27 and basically it's hitting boost cut at that speed and uh, we're gonna try to run it directly to the wastegate because the wastegate spring is 18 pounds and it's just not doesn't care what the wastegate spring is apparently so let's see what we can do so we're running directly um to vacuum to the wastegates. There's no boost controller in line. And this will basically bypass the boost controller, eliminating it as a source of error. Let's see what the car does. I put the fuel correctly. I adjusted the VE based on my last uh, few runs. Um, and hopefully this works. So that didn't work and we made even more power because I revved a little higher.
right, so we 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 put the the vacuum source, the boost source, directly into the wastegate with 18 pound spring. Still the same thing. It's not going below uh, 27, and it's a well, I'm sorry, not 18, 20 pound spring in there. Um, we're gonna double check that, see what's going on, and then most likely what's gonna end up happening is. Uh, this car is going to be mainly running on E85 anyway. We wouldn't have to do that. So we put some uh, X98, but we had half tank of 93 in there. Um, combined, I think it was 40% ethanol. I just wanted to see what the real wastegate was. Um, that way we know how much boost is going to run at bare minimum. Now I feel safe doing it on 93. So now I'm just going to go all out on 40 with very, very minimal timing. So this time uh, I was able to run the entire uh, boost and we figured that it was 30 pounds and um, it made like 600 something after a couple of runs that we did. Um, and this is where it's going to stay at. He, the bare minimum that we have that we can actually push this car without changing the springs is 30 PSI, um, which is fine for E85 and whatnot, but not for 93. So we're good doing a flex fuel anyway. He's never going to run below 30, 40%, um, which is going to be wastegate of 30 PSI. All right, so reluctantly, we had to, instead of switching out the springs, uh, which is set to 20 and is boosting 30. I put uh, some x85. I'm sorry x98 and The percentage went up to 50 now. I was confident in You know going above a 28 pounds of boost on this turbo So I let it hang out zero wastegate uh, Just you know boost source to the wastegate directly and it topped out at 30 apparently this thing won't at 20 spring is, is boosting 30 pounds which is fine it just means that he can never run 93 um so i just did a run at 30 pounds and it made 651 but i'm literally running like 10 degrees of timing up top i'm not doing anything with this um but yeah what we're what we're gonna do now is change out the spring to 18 pounds Maybe that'll lower below 30 and then we could run 93 and do a full flex fuel tune on this. And then eventually uh, go for big power. It's a beautiful car. Unfortunately, the person who owns it and is going to be driving it is crazy. So if you ever see this man on the street, just stay away from him. <laughs> Unless you're a girl, he needs a girl. You happy with the 650, bro? Like, this is it, the bare minimum this car will make a 650. Let me get used to that, and then we can go for more later. All right, cool. All right, guys, more videos to come. So, as always, I'm taking it to the street. Um, I did do the park throttle on the dyno, the VE portion of it, because this ECU actually runs, is their main calculation for fuel and everything else is on VE. So it doesn't matter you know, what uh, type of fuel you use. When you set your PE correctly, the fuel just doesn't stay. So I'm uh, just verifying everything on the street right now. I'm really not going to push it that hard. Uh, let the customer do that. But this uh, is part of my process as well to afterwards verifying everything on the street. Um, kind of do some fine tuning uh, so the car feels smooth and very drivable. The, the dyno this car is actually pretty good that's the best part about the new age aftermarket ecus they're very intelligent very fast and it has a lot of closed loop operations and it's a pretty enjoyable experience I want to 
to take this opportunity to um, thank people for watching my videos and really giving me a lot of love both in person and online. Um, you guys make it really worthwhile, and especially when I find that somebody says, oh, I, I didn't know something or I missed that, but I was successful in everything else. That little bit of help that I'm providing makes everything worth it. It really, really is uh, gratifying to me. And this is the, one of the main reasons why I do all this stuff. I did uh, kind of receive some uh, negative feedback and this was from professionals. Uh, they were saying that, hey, making the videos, now everybody's gonna think that they are tuners and whatnot because this person thinks that my videos are pretty detailed. Well, that's the whole point. If you're really that good, no one's gonna really take your business away from you. And this, my videos are set up for would-be tuners and uh, especially people who are looking to tune their own car and if you just wanna enjoy or if you just wanna know about the uh, process of what professionals do, or at least mine. And then um, the other reason why I do this is because I really want feedback from other people who, are, who do this for a living. Like, what am I doing wrong? I'm always trying to improve myself. Historically, this field does not share information, but there are a good bit of us that do. A few other guys that are really, really, uh, I guess, helpful and, you know, does not uh, look at the money aspect of it. Although uh, it's okay to do so, but these guys are real sweethearts. Um, but yeah, thank you again for watching my videos and, and uh, giving me some shout outs. Thanks.